hospital. She had made Babalu Starline in the late 1960s. The ships did see action in many wars, like the Vietnam War, but it was outdated by its steam propelled propulsion. The steamship would run into a memory from World War II, and this would be chaos as an old B 17 route to save the crew. This would be very short and miserable for the crew. As it was not a landmine, but it was actually a planned secret attack on the ship that was planned a year ago. The crew had no idea what was happening. And the back of the keel was blown out. The keel was blown out and parts of the ship were already flooded. The ship was already leaning down, going down. The keel was blown out, the propeller was still spinning, desperately trying to make it back to land. But it would probably be no use, as the ship would still continue on, pushing water into the ship. The ship would seem pretty level, but the ship would not be level for long, as another explosion echoed through the halls. This explosion would rattle the ship. As a whole part of the ship would be blown out by the hospital bed. By the hospital beds. The ship would no big doubt be going down. That's his point of view from the captain. It's Captain Henry the Sixth. We've been had a whole long family of captains, but I've never seen this much damage before. The whole bottom of the ship was blown out, windows were blown out, and hospital beds were scattered everywhere. Giant holes for the ship would chill water leaking into the bottom. I don't know how the ship was not down yet, but it probably would be down very soon. The ship still continued on, but shaking felt. By shaking this belt, the ship would probably be going down in less than two minutes. The ship seemed pretty stable from first class passengers lying on top of the hospital ship, as the Blue Star Line had to make some short adjustments to the ship. The ship was still continuing. There's no path for full speed. But the ship was starting to lean over to the starboard side a little bit. No one knew yet, but the ship would go down. The ship leaned over about three degrees to starboard. Before the crew would probably may have to shut down the engines. The engines were not able to be shut down. They will still continue at full speed as the water still flooded in. More shaking would erupt from the ship as the boiler started to explode in a neat. This was called extreme damage to the ship and would cause it to sink faster. The patients were evacuated to the ship of decks as there was no lifeboats in the ship because the ship lost the lifeboats in a storm and was heading to get new ones. The ship was shaking a lot. The ship was also starting to literally collapse in itself. Wooden beams on from the on the boiler room started to collapse into the into the metal, causing different holes to erupt. It was chaos on top of the ship, and no one thought that they would survive the ship. It still seemed to learn more to starboard and starboard and lean more to starboard as well. The ship started to more lean as chaos was erupting downstairs. Captain as the helmsman, helmsman, as the water line was starting to go down, he asked them to turn off the engines of the ship. As a no point, as the engines downstairs were already under. This in theory actually helped cause the ship to be stable back up. Causing the ship to be stable because of its not bad condition.
but it's of its state. The ship would continue going down. Explosion would happen underneath the water from one of the boilers, causing the ship to rise five whole feet out of the water, or exaggerated about two feet. The ship was 100% going down, and the captain knew this. Repower the engine to the dead slow at two, at two miles per hour. He didn't know the ship was going to go down, but he didn't know when. And the best hope of survival at this point was to try to beach. Water still flooded the beams and was actually starting to get very high on the water line. The list of slurred got worse. Got to the point where we got to five degrees and stubborn. Didn't seem like a lot on the ship though. The ship was built with a purpose. The ship started to crack a little bit. The ship went down a lot. The ship started to rise again. As the capsized ship started to carry as the stern and the funnel stopped. The ship started to run over. The ship was rolling over inside because of damage. Some crewmates and people who tried to get on the, on the other side of the ship. Another crewmate fell into the window, straight into the sleeping hall. He was uh, had to be evacuated out through the bottom of the destroyed ship. The key was this, uh, was showed with the damage you had. And the ship went down even more. Rescue would come and pick up the ship after it sunk. Two miles away, a rescue plane would take off. Rescue plane was an old B-17. Giant platoons on it. Two engines only, and it had a lot of crew kitchen and space in it. B-17 would start to take off. And would only not go as very fast during its journey. It would lift off almost immediately because of its powerful engines. And would start turning towards the rescue of the stranded boat. The temporary has already sunk two hours before. Sunk in about 20 minutes. Not bad for the ship. But lifeboats were not added also because of the capsizing factor. But only one lifeboat for a combination that needed six lifeboats. The scale design caused the ship to only be in ports only two miles away for big rescue planes from the war to rescue them. The rescue planes started to come at over 120 knots or miles per hour. Rescue plane was big and bulky, but it also had a lot of crew accommodation and a lot of, and a lot of space to accommodate a lot of people. It was a great rescue plane. But the ship already sunk two hours before. The rescue plane had to land to rescue up the survivors. The rescue plane was coming for a landing offshore. Two miles away. Only took about two minutes for the rescue plane. But in total only took 30 minutes for ready and crew. The plane started to land at very hyper speed, so I slowed down the engines as its cruising landing speed was supposed to be 100. It slowed down the The platoon started as the plane started to land gently down at, um, at 95. At 90 knots per hour, the plane finally did not touch the water yet. But what? At 80. Four miles per hour, the plane would touch the water, landing in a sharp thing 
as the platoon started to come up and the plane started to land. The temporary casualties were about 180 out of, its, out of its original crew of 300. Most of those was tra trapped men down below, and some of them were patients blown to bits by accident. Yeah, this, this accident cost the cost Blue Star away about $21 million. They were able to pay it up quickly, did not really make a dent in the Blue Star line. But also actually cost the military more dollars. As Blue Star was actually paid $21 million as reparations to what happened. But they have to pay they have, they have to pay the workers a lot of money to the families that were tragically lost. The rescue plan was able to be rescued. They were able to rescue a lot of people. And that would be the end of the story of the temporary. Served for only 20 years until it was sunk. Goodbye.